Hi, sir. I called the police. I'm 25 years old. I'm trying to leave my mother's house. She's abusive. Hello, guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Summer. I'm going to share a very... Will I call it a strong video or a powerful video? I don't even know what to call it. And it's going to be very long because I'm going to post the videos of this interaction between the mother and her daughter. And I'm going to say this. At first, when I saw this video, I'm going to play it for you guys in a second. It's a long one. But please, guys, watch this. If you've never watched any of my videos, please watch this one. Because I want us to have a dialogue. Because we're at a point where there is a generational gap, if, that, if that's the way to put it, between the children we're raising now and how we were raised or where we, where we were raised, right? And how we were raised and where we were raised. From the way she speaks, I'm believing that she was born in uh, america her name is ifani and i think is ifani chuku nothing is too heavy or nothing is too hard for god is that Igbo name i played this at first i played this and i cried i listened to you see the the girl went viral because the said oh, she called the police on her mother and i saw only the aspect where the police were called and i took my time to find out how it all started how it got to that point and i cried a few times when i say i cried i cried because i saw myself in both the mother and the daughter now at first i thought to myself why did she why, why did she even post this she shouldn't have posted this online but i'm going to say this i have to say thank you if i knew thank you for posting this because you are giving us opportunity to have this conversation because it is important it is if i knew and her mother but there are a lot of Ifani's and her mothers in the world. A lot of women and their daughters. Fathers and daughters too, but we speak about this one because it's mother and daughter. I'm going to say at the end my opinion about it. It's long, but please let's watch this and let's dialogue. Because you don't know who we will be saving. Who will we, who we will be saving by having this conversation. A family we may save by having this conversation. A parent, we can help to change her mentality by having this conversation. A daughter, we can help to understand their parent by having this conversation. That it is big. And I always say it, why things like this are important is that the family is the foundation on which society is built. So if we keep failing in our homes, we may end up building a failed society. Okay, so I'll let you guys watch the whole video and please wait for my opinion at the end of it and you will leave your opinions as well. Okay, I'll let you watch this video. The thing that can help you with bitterness is God because I was once there where I was very bitter. I was bitter at everything around me. I was bitter with everybody. I was bitter with Do you know the things that I just told you that you did to me, you never apologized for? And, and please explain to me how, are, how, 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 how you are helping you are, me. You, you how are you, how, how was that me. helping me? You are talking about how did you help me you by abandoning me when I was eight months pregnant? You how did you abandon by cursing me out while I was in the NICU? You <laughs> you. Mommy, the conversation is over. You. It's over. The conversation is over. The conversation is over. It insults me before my face. Yeah. And you want me to apologize to you. The conversation is Let over. You, the conversation is over. This rubbish. With my you father. Know, with my know. father for 33 I, years. I'm just like my father. I'm just like my father. That's why I <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Have, have a beautiful day. That's why friendship. And that's why he doesn't want to be your friend. That's why. <laughs> or be with that's you. <laughs> or be with you. <laughs> it took me that. Yes. Okay. Or be with me. Thank God. Because God saved me. Okay, girl. God saved me from a crazy character. Oh, Lord. Very have mercy. I wish God would save me from this crazy character. <laughs> yes. And he's going to save me from your own. Yeah. I know he will. He's going to save me from, from your, your own. From your mouth to God's ears. May God help you. May God save from you from your mouth to God's bitterness. ears, please. I can help you. I didn't make you bitter. Please. You and you Ooh. alone have the reason why you are so bitter. And until you ask God to help you, you, I, 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 I'm sorry for you. I am very sorry for you. But 
As for the love I have for you, it's not going to change. Okay. You insult me from tomorrow till next year, it's not going to change. And I'm not going this to is apologize. Some type of love. I'm not going to apologize. Yeah, to you, a child I that takes every minute yeah. to insult me to my face. Okay. You insult because I'm insulting you by telling you, you exactly. Just like God's you. Just like you. Just like God's you. Please look up the definition God's of narcissistic. You, you, that's what you You're, are. I'm narcissistic because I'm telling that's you all of the things you did to me. I did nothing to you. Oh. <laughs> I did nothing to you. An action brings a reaction. Oh, wow. I did nothing you did to nothing you. to me. A, every action brings a reaction. Okay. You do not treat me like crap and expect me to. I treated treat you, you like, like crap. Yes, you did. I treat you because like you crap. Because you that you're not mature. Oh, you're, I'm not mature. You're not mature. I am. And that you can say anything you want to And me. you can treat me however. And, and it's okay you. because you're my mom. Sit down and eat your food. I was May eating God my food. I was still... I'm going to eat this food. May God heal you for bitterness. From your lips to May God's God. ears. I, that, and that is my sincere... From your lips to God's you. ears. Because that bitterness... That bitterness... If God doesn't help you with it... It will eat you up. Mm -hmm. Because I know. Yeah. I'm a living testimony. So I bitter. was a bitter... Very bitter woman. Okay, was. Very bitter. Yes. Okay. I was. Right. I'm in a better place now. Awesome. Can't you tell? Mm. Uh, can I? Can't you tell? <laughs> can I? Can't you tell? When you are bitter, you get beclouded. Okay. Everything everybody says becomes like. So, I know where you're coming from. No, you don't. I know exactly. You where don't know where I'm coming from. from. If I am. You have no idea. Believe me when I tell you. I don't believe you. From. When you have you have gone through an abuse mm -hmm. from multiple gone, people, from you multiple, included. From multiple people, you included. Yes, ma'am. Yep, you from included. From multiple people, mm -hmm. you get to a place yeah. that you will say, "Oh no, they're trying to take my right from me. They're trying to do this. They're That's what do you that. do. They're trying to do that. I need you to okay. calm down. No life." It's not like you think it is. I know. That's exactly it gets much where better. I was. That's where I was. I was very bitter. For everything you think I did to you, by being abusive to you, yeah, it is out of my own bitterness. And for that, I so your sorry. bitterness caused for you that, to abuse me, and that's abuse okay. You physically, you abuse you physically, oh, physically, emotionally, what verbally. I did. I will never, physically, emotionally, I will never verbally. Apologize. I brought you up. Mommy, I really don't care. I will never apologize. You see, when you were a child, yeah. I spanked you. I will never apologize. And then what that. about when you threw a lamp at me and called me a hoe because you found pictures of Chris Brown in my phone? It's fine. It's that, fine. That was out of you love, too. You are being so dramatic. Okay. You are being so dramatic. All right. Why are you? Why are you like this? Okay. Why are you convincing yourself of so many things? So many things that never happened. It happened. In your head? No. It happened in your it head. It happened in real life. God help you. In this lifetime. You really need God's help. I hope you get it first. You I have. I have. Okay. I I'm telling you. Do you know it is difficult for somebody to open up their mouth and actually accept that they were bitter? Yeah. It's a hidden process. I have. All and right. it's because God has visited me over and over in my mess. That's why my, I can actually look and see that God saved me from a man I thought was the best thing that happened to my life. Okay. And I pray that God will visit you. Mm -hmm. I pray. I know you've gone through a lot. Yeah. Emotionally. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know about this physical one you're talking about with your relationship. Okay. Uh, it, verbally, it can wear you down. All right. And I pray to God, in in all honesty, that He will visit you and bring you His peace. His peace that surpasses all understanding. His peace, so that you stop being so angry. And also, accept when I tell you that my offer to you concerning my grandchild is out of love. It's not because I'm trying to control you, but because of what you've been through, you see everything as somebody trying to take your your power away from you. You even said that. I was you. I was you. 
And I am glad God brought you back into my life. Mm. I am glad. Okay. I am grateful to God. But I want you to take it easy. It will be better. It will be better. I was a good... Ask Amaka. A total stranger. And that day, I didn't even do anything. No. I didn't do anything. Amaka and I went to wash our car. After we got out from church. And... Uh, she the guy came to the uh, told, you know when you get to where they tell you put the car in the neutral and all that and i think was i talking with amaka or i was doing something i can't remember i put it in the neutral just like he said but i didn't say what to him then the next thing i said i heard was the boy came to my window we did not have any conversation i'm telling you but i knew it was not that boy talking he did not have any conversation with me it, to say that we quarreled or anything. But this boy came to my window and knocked on my glass. I see your sister. She's a living witness. She, he knocked on my glass and I ran the glass down. He said, why are you so bitter? I said, excuse me? We were coming from church. Hey, what to you? I have a phone call coming in. Can I talk to you later? It's an important call. Anyway, I'm going to uh, Gosden. Okay? One second. I'm going to Gosden. All right. And I pray that God will give you, like I said, don't know how to respect my boundaries. What boundaries? I asked you to stop boundaries making that who? statement. Damn that. I understand that. She sees you. me eat every day and I offer her food. My daughter is going, going to eat when she's ready. She's not malnourished. She's not underweight and she's not unhealthy. But you want to know what is unhealthy? That I keep setting a boundary with you that you keep crossing. Why? If somebody asks you, don't say this thing. Why is that the one thing you want to say? Why will you keep coming to me? She needs to eat solid. She needs to eat solid. Is she malnourished? Does she look unhealthy to you? She is fed. She is healthy. She eats more than everybody in this house. Breast milk is more fattening, more healthy than anything that we eat. When she's ready to eat, I feed her. She has eaten multiple things. I'm not going to force food down her throat so that she can have an unhealthy relationship with food. And I'm also not going to keep asking you to keep m m my boundaries. There are things in your life that you would not like to talk about. There are things that trigger you that you would not want somebody to bring up to you. I wouldn't cross that line with you. So why do you keep doing that? Why? You wouldn't cross this line. I don't know. I don't know and I don't care. But the point is, respect my boundary, please. Because then you get mad. It's not, it doesn't take yelling. But have, have you noticed since I've been here, the only time I get like this is when you do that. When you sit up here and you try to tell me how to parent the daughter that I literally pushed out of my womb and that you did not care to check in on for six months and you're telling me the phone works both ways. I am your child and she is your grandchild. Why does your grandchild who can't even operate a telephone have to call to speak to her grandmother? That sounds very childish. And you think I'm going to call to make you call to check in on your granddaughter? That's childish. The same way my own father is expecting me to pick up phone when I was younger to chase after him my daughter will never i'm telling you right now my daughter will never in her life chase after your love or anybody else's for six months you know my phone number i didn't block your number your number was never blocked for six months you chose not to call me you chose not to check in on your granddaughter for six months and now you're telling me the phone works both ways and then you dare throw in my face why did i call you because you would have much rather me stay in a place where i was being emotionally and physically abused than to call my mother and like I said honestly it was a thought of mine to have rather been homeless if it wasn't for my sister and that says a lot you know you know I know you are troubled I'm not troubled you're troubled I speak that back I to did, you back to, you the are, you're back to the sender back to the sender you are troubled I'm not troubled. I'm back troubled. to the thunder. You're the one that struggled. But, but You're the God, God is, is going, going to, to put it back you. to you. I'm healed. Going God you. is going to put it back to you. Yes. Don't speak negativity onto me. I'm not you're, troubled. You're, God. you're troubled. God. God is going to put it back to you. Don't speak negativity God on me. Is God is going to put it back to you. 
God is going to keep putting it back to you. Yeah. Every yeah. negative word you speak against yeah. me yeah. is coming back to so you. Every you negative thought so you think of me is that. coming back to you. So every, so every time you open your mouth and speak ill on my name, it so will come back to you. That. I didn't no, the you. anger comes from people like you not knowing when to respect boundaries and then expecting me to shut up and trying to silence me. I cannot be silent anymore. I'm so sorry. You are so So angry. sorry. I'm not angry. This yes. is my power that you're trying so hard to take from me. Can't take it from me. I'm so sorry. Let me tell you. Well, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you. It doesn't matter what you say, let honestly, you but you know everything let I said is the truth. Thing. You, you are talking nonsense. You're talking nonsense. I'm talking nonsense. Yes. That's where you are. That's where you are. You talk back to me. Yep, because you want me to shut up so you, you can continue to speak to negativity That's onto me in my you life. Are. Yep. You talk back to me. That's where you are. Like, I'm supposed to really take you seriously right you, now. You talk for six back to months, me. you did not check, you had call or check much. on me. If you had that for that for six much. months, you didn't call or check on me. me when I was eight much. months pregnant, you, you abandoned me. Over. When I was eight months pregnant, you abandoned me. And then, you what, and, you and then when I was in the NICU, then when I was in the NICU, bleeding from having a baby, you were yelling at me, screaming through the phone because I asked you to take my sick sister back home because my newborn baby could not come into the house where somebody was sick. You cursed at me. You rained curses on me while I was laying in the NICU with my newborn baby, which honestly is really crazy. If I know. If you hate me that much, why did you take your sister's offer? Mommy, do you want me to leave? If you hate me, because I can much, leave today. If you hate me, that I can much, leave today. If you hate me, that I can much, leave that today because, because you're being so narcissistic right now. If you hate me that much, where is the love supposed where, to come from? Where is the love to? I just told you what you did. For six months, you didn't call or check in on me or your granddaughter. When I was eight months pregnant, you, you abandoned me because I stood up for my sister. Then when I had my baby, you tried to come into my life and act like nothing happened. And then while I was in the NICU with my newborn baby, still open, still bleeding out, you called me on the phone to yell at me and curse at me because I asked you to take my sister and leave my apartment because my new baby could not come into a home where my sister was sick. You cursed at me and you yelled at me because I asked you to do that because my newborn baby could not come and be around somebody who was not feeling good you took offense to it that's what you did to me amongst other things that I'm not going to list to you but that is what you did to do me do you know why I kept away for you for six months why this toxic behavior yes it's very toxic how you treat me and how you deflect every time it's so toxic because you hear are you hearing yourself it's so toxic that you deflect everything what was the reason i was sitting in the NICU and you were cursing at me and yelling at me what was the reason you abandoned me when i was eight months pregnant and you ignored me and you didn't want to talk to me because i stood up for my sister that you were actually bullying on the phone despite me talking to you the day before and giving you a better advice in what your business plan that she gave you and calming you down while i was eight months pregnant my you i was moving into my new apartment then my sister calls me on the phone and telling me screaming at screaming and crying that you did something to her you hurt her feelings while she was in a low point i called you and i went off on you because that's bullying and then in return you apologized to her and you cut me off while i was eight months pregnant and then the day i had my baby i unblocked your number and you called me then you came you cooked food you left and then you said you were coming back mind you did i ask you to come no then you say you were coming back you came back and then when amaka said she wasn't feeling good amaka said she wasn't feeling good and i said okay you guys cannot stay here you have to leave because my newborn baby cannot come back to my apartment because she's not feeling if my sister isn't feeling good then you began to yell at me and curse at me over the phone and you said i kicked you out of my house when all when I had every right to not want to bring my newborn baby into a home where somebody doesn't feel good, and that's just the least of things. And 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 I know you're gonna deflect it, so go I'm ahead. Six months ago, you called me because of tax returns, and for almost one hour, you were talking and shouting at me. There is nothing you did not tell me that day. Did I reply you? 
I wasn't shouting at you. I actually was speaking to you calmly. Yeah, and as soon as I stopped talking, for 20 minutes, I was talking and telling you everything you ever did to hurt me. And as soon as I, I shut up talking, you um deflected. You deflected. I and you deflected. gaslighted me. I because you sent no, me you to you sent me to a tax lady. Say, Mind you, you knew you, I didn't. You I knew. said to you, I don't have anything to say. Because, the, you, because of yeah, I did. I did not and say you, anything. What, would, so what, what could you say? Discussion? Like, you don't what have nothing to say right now. There is no need of talking to somebody who intentionally called me to curse me out. I didn't curse you out. I yes, spoke you to you did. very respectfully oh, and did. calmly. And I told you everything. You I just told you times. things. You I told you everything. Times. Everything you, that I just said now. I said this plus if more. I, I said this plus more to you. I'm okay, that's cool. I, I'm not going to. That's fine. Uh, uh, bother about you making carrot juice and giving to Kosi. Mm -hmm. You see your problem? The problem you have is that you don't know when somebody is Offering a hand of help. What what hand of help, somebody mommy? Somebody is is being is being pushed for. I am offering you a hand of help. A hand of help. I feel you, but you can't talk to your mother that way. And be blessed. Confront it respectfully, or else stay away from her. Um, okay. Before I say what I got to say, I hate when people like respond to the negative comments without really acknowledging all the positive ones, you know, because honestly, it was just so much positivity up under that post. I just, I can't ignore it. Like, y'all are so amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It took me 25 years. No, it really didn't. It really didn't. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I've been standing up for myself like that for some years now. But I have been surviving a narcissist for 25 years. The only reason I posted it today is because I'm really fed up. Um, I'm just real tired of people, like, coming into my life or giving me life and then just treating me like shit. Abusing me emotionally, physically, all that. Anyway... Um, to respond to uh, Miss Royal, and I really, I, from the sounds of it, Miss Royal, um, you're a narcissist, <laughs> and I'm sure if you have kids, um, they probably don't like you and don't want anything to do with you because you think just like my mother. Um, let me explain something to you. What you saw in that video was not disrespect. Um, I did articulate very clearly. Um, I did project my voice so I could be heard um, because my mother has problem hearing in her right ear. Um, so I didn't want any words to be missed at all. If we watch the same video, I also did not curse. Not one time. I'm so proud of me because I'd be cursing up a storm real bad. Like kind of like how I should curse you out because this was unnecessary um but let me explain something to you i am and i saw your other comment too i hope that you're not in your mother's house talking to her that way i saw that comment too um i am in her house let me explain something to you i don't want to be in this house i have my own home with my family that i built three bedrooms you know by the way i'm also educated um i went to school uh graduated with a bachelor's in nursing i'm also a birth doula um yeah but let me tell you when life lifes and i was going through a really bad breakup very traumatic breakup once again because people often abuse me emotionally verbally and physically um because i now have a daughter who i am in charge of responsible for her well-being and the way that she grows up i just refuse to um subject her to the same trauma that i had to be subjected to when i was younger however in order for me to remove myself from one toxic environment unfortunately i had to um resubject myself to another toxic environment being a mother i one day pray my daughter never has to experience the pain that i've experienced however if she ever is going through a toxic breakup i really hope that she can come home and feel safe to call me and come home unfortunately that was not my case i called my younger sister um i called a couple i called a friend and i vented a little bit and ultimately i had nowhere to go so um after considering being homeless 
with my one year old because I had nowhere to go I decided to pick up the phone and call my mother and um, she's a narcissist so she was gonna be happy to come to the rescue after six months of not contacting me nor her granddaughter so she missed six months of my one-year-old daughter's life do the math um so she came to the rescue because that's what narcissists do they love when you need them they love when you need them they love when your world fall apart yeah um so she came to my rescue and she has been doing this since i've been here and i can't um can't can't get her to stop can't get her to respect me and my boundaries so what you are actually seeing aside from all the things i listed in the video is just you know what i've been putting up with i just got tired today though i just got tired but um i hope you have a great day and i'm so sorry to your children that they have to deal with you because i'm pretty sure you are a narcissist all right toodles Disrespectful children. The Lord is not happy with this generation. SMH. I need her mother's side of the story. If I is the problem. Once again, I just want to say thank you to those of you who have been encouraging in the uh, comments. And I'm sorry that you're going through similar things or have been through similar things. Also, I'm so sorry if I'm whispering. It's early. And my fan is on. I'm sure that my mother loves me. And in return, I do love my mom. However, there are things that I've been through that I do believe were unnecessary. Growing up, my mom was a single mom. Um, I had one younger sibling. Then when I was 10, she had another my, my other sister so i have two younger sisters um since i can remember i have been the caretaker and you know everything else for my mom um i've been taking care of my little sister since i was nine also when i was nine i was uh sexually assaulted i'm sorry i'm gonna put a trigger warning on this comment but I was molested by my first cousin. Um, I didn't tell my mom until I was 18. The day that I told my mom, um, it was Christmas Eve and we got to arguing because she didn't want me to go to work and I wanted to go to work because we weren't doing anything and also because I needed the money. The first thing that came out of her mouth after I exploded and said to her that I had <laughs> been molested, um, my dad was there too. She said, why didn't you say anything sooner? That was the first thing that came out of her mouth. When I was in the seventh grade, everybody had, uh, you know, the bang. Everybody was going through their bang era, the bang phase. So I had shoulder length hair that was relaxed because my mom would relax our hair. Um, so I went home from school one day and I cut a bang and it was very uneven. So I pinned my bang up, pinned my bang up so that my mom wouldn't notice. And I had like one of those little cute humps. <laughs> uh, my mom came home. She instantly noticed something was off. She asked me to take the hump down. I took it down. Um, she was angry that I cut my hair into a bang. And then she proceeded to get some scissors and cut all of my hair off of my head. All of my hair off of my head. Me and my mom have had a lot of things going on throughout the 25 years that I've been alive. When I was 18 years old, I moved away. Around that time, me and my mom had a close relationship because I was allowing her to manipulate me and have a lot of control over my life. When I went off to college, if I didn't answer my phone, I would wake up, say I was taking a nap. I would wake up to 20 missed calls, 10 text messages, and then amongst other people that she had asked to call me to check on me. 
this is when I started realizing that the control was deep. Around this time, I began speaking up for myself. Once I started speaking up for myself, um, I was deemed disrespectful. And, of course, um, family members got involved and tried to check me. And I've always been a black sheep of my family. So, it doesn't really bother me. So, um, the Chris Brown situation that I was mentioning in the video where she threw the lamp at me and called me a hoe. Um, I was in eighth grade. I also was a virgin um, and had never had sex. Um, a lot of people want to know why I, don't, I didn't cry in the video. I'm a Pisces, which basically means I'm a crybaby. My mother's a Sagittarius. Um, over the years, I just kind of learned to not cry in front of her. Especially now. I think I just learned that, actually. I think I just learned it. Um, because when I was younger, she would laugh in my face. Once again, I love my mom. My love for my mom runs deep. I'm not saying these things because I don't love my mom. But I saw a quote that said, If people wanted a better story, a better role in your story, then they should have um played a better role or something like that <laughs> but yeah fast forwarding to um my adult life more of my adult trauma i guess <laughs> um when i got pregnant with my daughter me and my mom were not in contact with one another so i didn't i didn't tell her i was pregnant until i was four months pregnant when I was four months pregnant, I called her because I wanted to ask her to come see me because I lived two hours away from her at the time and my car was not reliable. Um, I wanted her to come see me. I was going to surprise her with a dinner um, and a present to tell her she was going to be a grandmother. At the time, I was in a two-year relationship. Also, I had graduated college with a bachelor's in nursing. Also, I was living on my own in my own apartment. Um, when I get on the phone to ask her to come see me because I had a surprise, she starts to question what I need her to come see me for. And ultimately, she starts to ask me if I was pregnant, but not in a nice way. Um, so she ruined the surprise. She ruined the experience. And then she slut shamed me for it. Um, we moved past it. There's so much to unpack here. Just know that I'm not saying everything. But we moved past it. Um, when I was eight months pregnant, as you heard in the video, my mother cut me off. Um, because I disrespected her by going off on her and, um, hanging up in her face. Because my sister, who never cries, mind you, my sister is an Aries. Um, not the youngest one. The youngest one is a Pisces like me, but my other sisters and Aries. She called me and she told me my mom had said some things to her and it, she was crying and it was a lot and I was pregnant. Called my mom, went off on her because it was she was bullying my sister. And then she proceeds to apologize to my sister, which she does often. She'll apologize to other people, but she won't apologize to me. Um, she proceeds to apologize to my sister. I look rough right now. Oh, well. Um, and then she cuts me off for being disrespectful for standing up for my sister. When I have my daughter, she comes to visit me uninvited. Um, and then I had to go to the NICU with my daughter. And while I was in the NICU, she was on the phone. I told her that my sister told me she was not feeling well, therefore they had to leave my apartment because my sister, I mean, my baby could not come to the apartment where my um, sister was sick. My mom took offense. She said I kicked her out of my apartment and she began to rain curses on me. If you're an African, you know what I mean by rain curses on me. There's nothing she didn't tell me that day about myself while I was in the NICU with my newborn baby. 
um anyway these are all separate stories of their own but hopefully my mother can give you her side of the story one day I do love my mom I believe she's been through a lot of trauma that's caused her to act how she's acted towards me but I also believe that it's okay to stand up for yourself even if it takes years and years and years I hope that a lot of y'all in the comments who can relate find the peace that I am beginning to find. Um, I have been no contact with my mother several times throughout my life. The most recent being for six months. The only reason I'm back here is because I was in a toxic relationship. Also, I've only been here back with my mom for a month. And I had been living alone since I was 18. I'm currently 25. It's only been a month, y'all. But I hope this sheds a lot of light onto a lot of things. I'll get on live later. Bye. Oh, everything yeah. that does not concern me he is not yours. Me. Watch yourself, he please. Me. Anyway, I'm okay. Are you he okay? He he me. Me. Did she what? tell you she's not okay? What happened? What did she say? I'm just saying. Like, what did she say that upset you? Telling me to tell me to hurry up and rush. Oh, tell me to hurry up and rush when she's going back and forth with you early in the morning. Oh yeah. That's uh, ready. Let's, let's go. That's you that, that's business. demonic charm. There's no it's demonic not going charm. Into work. There's no demonic it's charm. Not going into Just work. because I don't believe what you believe does not mean I'm demonic. Okay. Fact, you are not demonic. I'm not demonic. You I'm not being attacked by manipulation. You are Just manipulation. because I'm not a Christian does my not mean I'm is, under a manipulation. And you. also I don't belong to you. My also you don't own me. My because world, I own my myself. Is not with I'm you. sorry that you don't I, feel I'm, like I, I'm sorry that you want to own me so bad. That is trying to destroy. There's no demonic par power that's destroying me. Really? There's no demonic power really? that's turning me against really? you. The only person turning me against you, quote unquote, is you because really? of how, how you treat really? me. Yes. Anyway, you it's because can, of how you, you treat see. me that I you treat you how see. I treat you. You, you are see. the only person that has hurt me. I, I, if I treat me, you the way the, you treat me, how do I treat you? You will shed tears every no, day. No, that's not true. If you I treated you how you treated me, if I treated you how you treated me, I'm not dealing with you. If I treated you how you treated me, there's no demons that. The evil power that says no that evil. They, they will not let there's you no be evil. a human being. There's no that evil. That will not let there's you no evil over achieve me. your divine destiny. I am always, that power I am, is I am going to bow. My it has already just bowed because, in the name of Jesus. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. I don't you owe you. I don't you owe you anything in this life. You do not own me. You don't own me. I am always going to be settled. Yes, but it's not you either. It's not you either it it's God, God. By the exactly power of our Lord Jesus it's God Christ. exactly by the power of God our Lord Jesus I'm Christ. glad you understand that it's in God's hands and not your Lord hands Jesus and it doesn't Christ. matter what you say Every because I, my destiny is always bow. going to come to pass like I'm sorry that you believe that somebody has to believe exactly I what you so believe to be my eyes are not closed. My eyes are wide open. Exactly. Exactly. Nobody has hypnotized me. Nobody has hypnotized me. Nobody has hypnotized me. No, nothing started from anything. Nothing started from anything. Yes, and the my friend, my Christian friend, that she's Christian just like you. Yeah. You you hate anybody who truly, truly, truly. C connects with me in a way, way that you will never you will never meet her never you don't deserve her. to meet anybody I who's important in my life you don't there's you no you don't into you, a demonic I am pattern. not any demon you don't know what you're talking about and it's so funny because I I know exactly why you're acting like this this morning why am I, I because because you're consumed by your own your own thoughts and your own tr manipulation trips and my everything you try to send my way is coming back to you tenfold Woo! And you don't even know. If you I, don't even know the extent of it. But everything you're trying to send to me I, is coming to you tenfold. I, like I don't. I'm you. done talking to let you because this you. conversation is irrelevant. Anyway.
I'm she, not gonna have you good no day, problem. okay? Go hurry up, room. hurry up. Don't talk to she me. Has no don't talk to me. Go to your room. Don't talk to me. She has you no know problem. who are you to be telling me to go, go to my to room? room? The room that's in she your has, house. That's not my room. No and problem. I don't have to go anywhere. I'm she a twenty five no year old woman. Oh, you, don't you tell me that. don't tell me to go you to my room. Who are you? Who are you to tell me to go to my room? Please watch how you talk to me. Anyway, anyway, no, no, I am. Are you? I am. Are you acting like you're a fifty-seven year old? Are you? Look at Chuck. Look at how you looked at me. Look at how you looked at me. Remember that. Remember exactly how you looked at me. Okay. God has already had mercy on me. Look at how you looked at me. Those eyes will be looking back at you. Okay. The, the same way you just looked at me, remember? The, no, no, no. Remember? No. Remember how you looked at me? I'm not a child. I'm not a child. I'm not a child. I'm a 25 year old woman. I don't have to be be under your control. I don't have to be under your control. No, I have not been behaving like a child. You have been behaving like a child. You check yourself. God is already in control of my life. And that's why you're so mad. You lost all control over me that you've had on me from a young age. You're so mad that you will never get to reap the seeds of what I sold in this lifetime. And remember how you just looked at me? If remember I, the disgust you think of me? Remember I, that when I when my I, blessings come into this physical I, realm, remember that I you will never, you will never, you will never get to I reap the poop. seeds of what I, I sowed. You will never one. get to reap the seeds of what one. I so, I you will don't never get to. You. you will slap me. Don't let me slap, slap you. Me. Slap I me. You will never get to reap the seeds of what I, I sow. You will never get to reap the seeds of what I sow. You will never get to reap the seeds of what I sow. Touch me. If you touch me, I promise you, if you touch me, you will be on this floor. You will never get to reap the seeds of what I sow. You will never get to reap the seeds of what I sow. All my blessings, all my blessings will come I into my life. All my blessings will come into my life from the I spiritual realm into the physical realm. And will you will never get to reap the blessings of what I sow. You will, no, you will not. They are my seeds. You will not reap them. I will book it. I will book it in the name of Jesus. I will book that big money. You will never get to You will never get to me. I do not call it me. Because I told you multiple times to stop bringing up solids because I feed her solids when she wants to eat solids, but I'm not going to force her to eat solids. I got upset because I asked you multiple times and you keep bringing it up. You know, can I tell you why I keep bringing it up? Because you don't respect my boundaries. It's what your face. It is. You told me the other day that in her mouth that she got. When is she she doesn't like something she gags. Like that's normal. If you don't like the taste of something, you're going to gag. There's something there's things that I give her that she doesn't gag that she'll eat. That doesn't 
doesn't have anything to do with me asking you continuously to stop bringing up her eating solids. Everything you've asked me to do, I have done to help you. Eat her. No, you haven't. You've done everything that you want to do except respect my boundary of asking you to stop bringing up solids. That's the one thing that I asked you to do, and you don't do it. So, all the efforts I'm making is working against what you want. Do you think I'm doing it out of spite? Do you think me trying to help you and see if she can start eating for you? Do you think I'm doing it out of spite for you? That's what you think. Then you're thinking wrong. You are my child. She's my grandchild. And I am grateful for both of you. As a mother, you will begin to understand why I cannot give up on you. No matter how things are, I will never give up on you. It's not about giving up on me, it's about respect. All this argument, that the argument is that because you said she will never eat it. I didn't. I said she's not going to eat it. Because I know that she's not. But if I was referring to negative. How is it being negative when I'm her mother and I know what she's going to want to eat and what she's not? Based off of other things that I've tried to feed her. How is that negative? That's not negative. So this thing, all you can do, you have to try different things. I try different and that's things. What I was trying to do. Yes, but you're not. And I think it, you're completely missing the point, And I don't know if you, if you're doing it on purpose or what. But I've asked you multiple times to stop bringing up her eating solids because I every single day I offer her solids, but I'm not going to force her to eat. So I don't understand why you continuously bring up the one thing that I asked you not to bring up. Okay, I will. But we being room for breast milk doesn't mean you're giving up on your child. I am doing baby led weaning. That means when she is ready, she will stop. She eats what she wants to eat. I don't know how else to say this, and I'm honestly so tired of having to explain to anybody how, how I'm choosing to raise my daughter. It is actually very draining and exhausting. So, apart from uh, taking care of Kofi, how are you intending of taking care of you? I take care of me, but honestly, I cannot take care of me until I get out of this house. You don't understand what is mentally draining for me to be here with you right now. You really don't understand, and I don't want to explain to you. I don't want to. My only goal right now is to get from up under your roof and be in my own home with my my daughter and my own vehicle so that I can start living my life again. That is my only goal in life right now. So I'm giving you yes. How? This because conversation is draining. Because I am asking you to help because you don't respect a boundary that I have repeatedly asked you to respect. There are several foods that she's already tried and liked, but there's days where she doesn't want to eat them. If I'm continuously saying the same thing, yes, it is draining to continuously have to repeat yourself. So, because of that, you decided to hold yourself in the room. Yes, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. Whose eggshells are you walking on? Yours, because this is your apartment. I'm happy. All I'm trying to do is to help you. That is all I'm trying to do. You say I shouldn't ask you about horses' stories. Okay, I will not ask you. I don't know what you went through. I do not know. I cannot claim to know because I never asked. In the sense that I know that asking will keep bringing up bitter taste in your mouth. That's why I never ask. Not because I don't want to know what you want to, but I feel that you need to hear. Until the time you feel comfortable enough, you want to talk about it. That's why I'm intentionally not asked, because I know where I came from. How bitter. The things I want to make me be. Unfortunately, it's the people that didn't do 
do anything to me that will suffer me. All you need to let me do is to heal and be back on your feet. I told you that day, I said that you are stronger than you think you are. You are stronger. Whatever does not kill you makes you stronger. I know I'm grown, but I'm really fucking nervous, bro, because she was not supposed to be home when I left, and she's home, and I got all my shit packed, and my ride outside, and don't y'all hate when, like, when you call your friends, and nobody fucking answer, or when there's a fucking crisis, oh my god. I got all my shit packed. I, this shit not gonna fit in the fucking car. This, all this shit is not gonna fit in the fucking car. But here's the thing. She wasn't supposed to be home when I left. And I just really feel like it's gonna be something. Like, I'm trying. I'm gonna try not to say nothing. But I really feel like she's going to say something. Like, I feel like she's gonna start with me. Because she doesn't know I'm leaving. And I got all my shit packed. <laughs> I got all my shit packed. I thought she was gonna be at work. But she's not at work. She's sitting right there. Nah, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Disrespecting her. Y'all love protecting abusers. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up, bro. When your mama whoop your ass daily and force you to do all types of crazy shit, then come talk to me. Until then, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, you too. About the damn tone. Shut up. Nobody cares. Y'all be ready to punch a, a, a nigga on the fucking street for talking to you crazy. But as soon as somebody stand up for themselves, it's a problem. Shut up. But, okay. I need somebody with some genuine advice. Common sense. I need some common sense in the comments. All this, all this shit not gonna fit in the car, is it? I'm, I'm delusional, huh? I'm delusional. I'm delusional. It's not gonna fit, huh? I'm a little delusional. I'm delusional, right? Yeah. Okay. So what I do? Cause I can't leave. Um, I I don't want to leave nothing. I can't come back. So what I do? 
don't take everything but see, see here's the gag i need everything i don't i need everything <laughs> i need it like I can't wait till she leave again. My ride is outside. My ride is literally outside. My friend. My cash app is in my bio. Y'all, for real? Okay, I'm finna start taking shit to the car. Should I stay on live or should I record it? Because the high, high key I got on live because I'm nervous. I feel so dramatic. Y'all, I'm not trying to be dramatic. I literally was I literally was not finna get on live. I literally was not finna get on live. But nobody answered the fucking phone. Why does that happen? Like when when you have a fucking crisis, nobody want to answer the fucking phone. Nobody answered. Let me stop. I'm grown. I can leave. The fuck? I can leave. I don't owe nobody no fucking explanation. <laughs> I can leave. I don't have to. Okay. Like, the fuck? I can leave, right? Yeah. Exactly. The fuck, bitch? It's just, I don't want confrontation. Because y'all swear up and down I'm so disrespectful. And it's not me. Y'all just don't see how she acts. You don't see that. She will come and antagonize me and antagonize me and antagonize me. Y'all don't get that, though. As soon as I say something, I'm disrespectful. That's what's really crazy to me. My heart racing. Call the police. I ain't calling the police. I am not calling the police. I promise you I'm not. It is not that serious because at the end of the day, I'm stronger. <laughs> at the end of the day, like... Worst case scenario, I can't take all my shit, bro. If I can't take all my shit, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. <sighs> and she really fucked my plan up. Because how, how you home? What are you home for? You're supposed to be at work. Why, why would you be home when I'm trying to escape? You're supposed to be at work. It's giving <laughs> domestic <laughs> Bro, this shit not funny. Exact. Give you a feel, me. <sighs> All right, I'm finna. I'm finna do it with my chest. I'm finna do it with my chest, but I gotta go get my baby toys. She need all her toys. What am I about? Okay, y'all. Let's be for real. I can't take everything. Like, let's just be serious. Let's be for real. Let's not be delusional. I can't take everything, right? Right. So. What am I gonna do? Just take what's real important. Yeah, my ride is outside. Can you put the rest in storage? Baby, in order to put the rest in storage, I would have to come back to get the rest. The plan is to not have to not come back ever again. So, let me take a deep breath. It's giving runaway. Like, this is really terrible right now. I feel so delusional. Like, why did I think all of this was going to come? Should I put my baby in the car first? I can't wait till she sleep. My ride is outside. My ride is not waiting till she sleep. Y'all say, yeah, put my baby in the car first. Okay. Sense. I hate when I have a good fucking plan and then all of a sudden, nope. Because why are you home? Like, literally, she's literally never home this time. Never. She really, she literally be at work. Okay. Why she said it? Why she said right? Like she's, it's giving you new. Who told you? I didn't even tell nobody. It's giving you waiting on me at the door. Mm. 
Yeah, she's literally sitting right there. I gotta take my baby first, cause you're not gonna play with me. Okay, where my baby shoes at? Gonna take the toys. She need her toys. She need her toys. Y'all, I really like. Don't make me cry. <laughs> don't make me cry, bro. For real. All right. This mm -hmm. is. Why is it giving runaway? <laughs> this is not funny, y'all. I laugh when. I laugh. Um, it's a trauma response. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a trauma response. It's not funny, bro. This shit not funny. I can't help but laugh. I can't help but laugh because not you fucked up all my plans. I'm gonna put y'all in my pocket. God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your guidance. We are blessed. We are protected. We are safe. We are healthy. We are divine. No harm shall come near us. No weapon fashion against us shall prosper. And every tongue raised against us in judgment shall always be condemned. No negativity shall reach us. And instead, we transmute that energy into positive energy for our greatest and highest good always. Oh, I say, I say, I say, oh. What? I think we make it. Um, we're leaving. Yeah. We're leaving. You're leaving with? Um, here. You're leaving here to where? Move, we're moving out. You're moving out to where? Um, I don't want to disclose that information to you. I'm not telling you. Excuse me. No, I can't excuse you. Mommy, I'm literally asking you to move out my no, way. No, I will not. <laughs> Amaka! 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 Excuse me. No! Can you move? I said no! Amaka, can you please tell mommy to move? No, I cannot let you move. I'm moving out. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you are not. Yes, I am. What's your mom? What? You should let me go. <laughs> you can't keep me you hostage. Me for I'm a 25 year old woman. No, you are not. I'm not going to hold this. No, you're moving anywhere. Excuse me. Go to that car and go and get me cozy. Don't touch no, me. No, you are not. Excuse me. You are not going. That way I told you. Excuse go me. and get me cozy. Excuse me. You are not going anywhere. Girl. You are not going anywhere. All right. You are not going anywhere. Excuse me. Go and get me cozy. You are not. You are not going anywhere. I'm okay. Call nine one one. Call nine one one. Because I will call the police on you. Call the police for what? You can't keep me hostage. You? I'm a grown ass <laughs> woman. I'm not gonna thank you. Get her. No, get her. Get her. Get her. You are get her. Get her. I'm not fighting you. Get her. Get her. Get her. Get her. I am leaving your home. I'm leaving you home. Your sister needs Can you excuse me? I don't need help. Not from you. Not from you. You're so abusive. Get the Go fuck off. Move. Pussy. Don't. She's not Go getting you my pussy. daughter. Who are you? You can't have my daughter. Call 911 because if not, she gonna end up on the ground. I promise you. Yeah, okay. I'm not gonna please. <laughs> Mommy, push I don't want to drag you. I don't want to drag you, but you can't keep you me to, here. You want to drag me? You want to drag me? Where are you going? <laughs> she's but blocking I'm the door. Gonna... She, Go like, what I'm supposed to drag cozy. her? Go and get me cozy. She's behind the house. Get off. Go me. and get me cozy. <laughs> I will leave this house. 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 Get off of me now. Stop. Get your money. Stop. 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 I'm not get my phone. Give me my phone. Here. Get off of me. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving your house. Mommy. I'm no, leaving. Stop taking me. I'm leaving your house. Move. I don't want anything. I'm leaving your house. No. No. <laughs> oh my God. If you touch me again. I don't want anything. If you touch me again. If you. I'm not. Where is this? I don't want anything. Oh, no. I don't want anything All right. I guess I'll have to call the police. Mommy, the more this keeps going on, the more things <clears> keep happening. Just my daughter needs help. Don't touch me. She needs help. Don't touch me. Go and come. Um, yes. Yeah, so, 
I'm trying to move out of Call, my mom's house. Call, Call and she's, Daniela. She's keeping me from leaving. Call Daniela. She's abusive and narcissistic. And she's keeping me from leaving. And I'm... T What's the address? My name is Paula. She needs help. She's not been acting herself. For months now, she's not been acting herself. She needs help. Yes. 3008. I don't know, but she's literally keeping me from leaving the door. And I'm, I have my daughter. I have my daughter in the car. And I just want to get my things and go. I'm 25 years old, by the way. <coughs> by the way. Okay, thank you. <sighs> Will you stop? Can you please get out of my way? I am help. not a child. What is your problem? She, she you are literally help. so. You you need, need help. help. You need help. You need help. You need you don't help. Know you need help. The police is on the way. It don't Let even matter. Them come. I need Let to go get come. my daughter. Let them come. I need to go get my daughter. No, you're not. Mom, I'm a condition no, mom. I'm a child. Go I'm and get cozy. Yeah. Go and get cozy. I'm gonna let you get it. I call the police. Stay on the way. Okay. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Just calm down. We are moving. Boy, we get out of here. Like, why well, I gotta fight you to get up out my get up out your fucking house? You fucking weirdo. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It shouldn't even got to that point. What the fuck? And then people like, why are you recording this? This family business. This is why the fuck I recorded that shit. Cause nobody would believe me. Y'all heard I mean, I mean, your friend. Yeah. Who you went to school? Mm -hmm. She okay. needs. She needs help. Mm -hmm. Okay. She needs help. Okay. I need my house key. I don't have your house key. The police is coming so I can get my stuff. I don't have your house key, okay? Stop talking to me, bro. Stop talking to me, bro. And then she's trying to call me crazy. Go watch all the videos on my page. She's trying to call me crazy so she can take my fucking baby. And y'all think shit is a, it's, it's regular. <laughs> y'all think shit is regular. This shit not fucking regular. It's like it's keeping me hostage. Hostage. And I'm trying to leave. And give my daughter a better fucking life. This is the second time I had to run away from an abusive, abusive situation in two months. Y'all telling me you don't have to punch her. Fuck is wrong with y'all? Hella videos showing how that lady treat me, and I'm trying to leave. I grabbed it. I grabbed him. All my baby shit. I don't understand, bro. I only got on here for my fucking safety. I don't give a fuck. If y'all get it or not, I pray that you never have to experience it. I pray that you never, ever have to experience it. I'm glad that y'all grew up with fucking normal parents without crazy, you know, tendencies and narcissistic traits and abusive shit. Mom, let Mama used to beat my ass all the time for no reason. She threw knives at me. She threw lamps at me. She fucking cut all my hair off. <laughs> like, and y'all telling me that's your mother. You shouldn't have punched her. She didn't know she was my mama when she was abusing me. When God sent her me, and she fucking, yes, does everything to me. I'm getting my shit, bro. Because I don't plan on coming back in this bitch. I do not plan on it. If y'all really want to help, fucking hit my cash up. Because I'm leaving all my fucking shit and all my baby fucking toys. Instead of fucking judging me, hit my cash up. If you give a fuck. Like, 
and want to tell somebody how to control their emotions. And this lady literally put hands on me first. Literally was trying to take my fucking daughter. And I'm only on here to have witnesses and so the police can see. That's it. So if you really give a fuck, that's what you can do. Because my baby is not going to have none of her fucking toys that I paid for, that I provided her with. And that's not fair. So if you really care, that's what you can do. Cash up. It's 999 people in here. Send a dollar. Thank you. Because at this point, my love and my heart have gotten me hurt time and time again. And I still, still, still can't stop loving. Hi, sir. I called the police. Hi, sir. I called the police. I'm 25 years old. I'm trying to leave my mother's house. She's abusive. Okay. She kept me hostage. She's keeping me hostage in the fucking house. Okay. All I'm trying to do is get my stuff and leave. She started putting hands on me. I defend myself. I put my hands on me. It's a whole. I have stuff in the room, but it's not going to fit in this car. It's about to come back at another time. Yes. So I am not holding She her. was. She was. I, I, she was. I, I held the door. No. No. Held she held the door and locked it and she put door. hands on me when I tried you to leave. You see my head? Okay, step away from the car. Yes, I am. Step away from the car. Oh, I'm not I'm not holding that. I am not holding that. I am not holding that. Amaka, so, help me put this stuff in the car. No. This is her childhood face. They went to school together. Help me put my stuff. I am 25 years old. I can leave. I can leave. Yes, I can This is her childhood friend. I was telling her childhood friend to please look out for her because I know my child needs help. I know she needs help. Can you? I, I tried to go. I said, you're not going anywhere. And she put hands on me. You know? Put this in the front seat. She pulled me on my head. She pulled me. That's imprisonment. That's false imprisonment. Now, I had to fight my way out the door. I literally had to fight my way out the door. Literally. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Yes, fight my way out the door. By, by putting my hand. Why are you touching me? Did I touch you? Yes, you did. Did, I, did she touch me? Thank you. I, I have more stuff. But you, can't, you can't fit it in here. <sighs> so, you when can I have a place to sit? When can I come back? Uh, just call back tomorrow. Hey, you, you can call? ask an, you you can ask an officer you to meet you up Excuse here. Excuse okay? me, sir. Yes. You see my leg? Uh -huh. I had to come and talk to this okay. young lady. Okay. okay. So let let I, me talk to your daughter for a minute. Okay. Yeah. I'll be up there to talk to you. Okay. I'll be up there. Okay, sir. Uh, come back with an office. Okay. Uh -huh. And you can get the rest of your stuff. Okay. Keep the door locked. Don't let her touch my daughter. Okay. Don't let her touch her. You can go ahead and go. So, come back with an office. So call, but. It's, what if she don't let me in? Cause I don't have no key. I left the key on the on the dresser. She keep asking me for the key. I said, look, she's 15. That's she that's has it. to live with this lady. You don't understand. Okay, I can't do anything about that. You don't have room in that car for anything else. All my baby stuff is in there. You don't have room. Look at the. You don't even have a place to see. Go get get. Are you home? Come back. Get a you home. Tomorrow and come back or get somebody with a truck. Okay? But you have, I think, technically. I know. She <laughs> got to sit in her car seat. I know. Go, go. Okay. I know. Okay. Go on. Go ahead and go. Okay? I'm going to go talk to your mom. Go ahead and go.
I love you. You can give her a hug if you want to. Tell her she can get another if she wants. Oh, God. It's okay. I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay. Next time y'all wanna say something to me about religion and Jesus, make sure that the people that you're defending actually know him, okay? Some people are actually crazy. And they're hiding behind their religion and their demons. Something as simple as me getting my stuff and leaving. <laughs> oh my God. And then she tried to tell the police that I put hands on her, but she not telling the police that she put hands on me first. If I can locked me in the room. <sighs> My mother put hands on me first. She put hands on me first. She locked me in the room and she was trying to get my daughter. All I was trying to do was get my things and leave. I had been packing for days. I thought she was going to be at work and she didn't go to work tonight. That's it. I really don't care. I really don't care to explain myself because honestly, all that matters is I got myself, I got my daughter and things are replaceable. Things are replaceable. My life is not, my life is not replaceable, okay? So it's okay, I'm cool. So there is so much, so much in it. But I want all of us, you know, this is what we will talk about on learning. On learning, don't, don't say, I am African, this is how we do things. Why? It's true. In Africa, we have the way of doing things. But sometimes we have to say, where are we today? Where is life today? For example, when the girl was trying, when he finally was trying to tell the mother that uh, she was doing a child, what was that she called? Child-led weaning. And I knew that something like that, her mother, let me tell you guys, her mother telling her about the feeding of the child, it is not for a bad reason. Of course not. The mother is, as far as her mother is concerned, uh, the mother of Ifani, as far as she was concerned, she knew better. Because as far as she's concerned, she's already tried and tested this, her own method, by the way she raised her children. So she feels that she is the mother she knows. But we're in 2023, there's something actually called a child-led weaning, right? So it is hard for Africa, African parents to let go. I remember my mother when I went to visit with my children when they were younger and I had a baby then. My mother wouldn't let me rest because I was wiping the baby's bum with her wipes. And she was like, she was, she kept on complaining. She dragged me away. Hey. Reported me to my brother and said, how can she be using wipes to wipe the baby bum? He said, there's no way wipes will clean a baby's bum. She said, the right way is water and soap. She is right. In the sense that that is how they did it. And I was right too. Because this is how I do it. And it's working for me. Does it mean my mother hates me? Does it make my mother a narcissist? Does it make my mother... No. She was speaking because she knew that to be the truth. So, my, our tweet, our, this, my mother did not raise children when they were... There was nothing like wives when my mother was raising us. So, don't be surprised. She's coming from where she sees it. Sometimes, to know whether a number is a six or a nine depends on where you are standing. So, the one person will say it's a nine. Another will say it's a six. Are they both wrong? No. But because of where they are standing. Um, Ifani's mother is standing from a different place from where Ifani is standing. Okay? Now, I, want to, I don't even know whether I should address the young people first before I address us, the parents. Okay, let me address the young, the, okay, the young people first over there. You know, because I see in her comment section a lot of young girls or young, I think mostly young girls, young people say, yes, I have these African parents and... They, they say a lot of things that basically with that narrative that African parents are bad, African parents are this and that and that. I always want people to 
sit down and ask themselves, is it hate? Is it hate? Or is it just ignorance? You understand? Your parents do not see it the same way that you see it. Do your parents hate you? A parent that hates you, and see, let me tell you, right? There are a lot of ways. Like, okay, there are a lot of parents that once the child turns 18 and they say, out. When Ifani's mother cried, when Ifani was about to move out, I lost it. I cried. Like, I was upset by it because I could sense that this woman loves her child. And I feel like, I think I'm going to jumble the, I'm going to speak about the parents and the children together so I don't, you know, I felt her pain and it was upsetting because I was looking at that and I said, if I use mother is a woman that does not know what else to do, she is doing what she thinks, is what she, how she knows to do it and you can tell it's like she's helpless. And um, let's be honest, if I use 25, if I use mother is uh, six, 57, if I is no longer a kid, if I is now a woman, she's even a mother as well. So these are two adults trying to engage. I believe, yes, if I use mother is the parent, but I believe that if I is old enough to realize the, the, the fact that there are some things her mother would never get it. It's not because she hates you, but because she doesn't get it. And she needs help. Oh. I got upset because I felt that she loves her child so much, but she expresses it in a way that her child sees as hatred. And it's so So like she is struggling harder. She, I feel like if I use mother is fighting harder, but she's making it worse because she doesn't know what to do. And I pray, I really pray that if I realizes this early enough, I don't, you know, may it not be, may it not be that is on the day that the dig the ground to put her mother, that she will realize. How much a mother loves her. A mother that no longer cares would not cry while she was leaving. She would cry. A mother that no longer cares would not take you back in with a child and have it to be there for you and your child. A mother that does not care would not give a damn how you feed your child. A mother that does not care will not do any of these things. But she is trying to the best of her abilities. Unfortunately, when the, the harder she tried, the worse it got. I want to tell you guys this story. I remember when I was new abroad, there was this, um, uh, uh, many years ago, I'm talking about, about 15 years ago, maybe even up to 20 years ago. So this Nigerian man was new, new in Europe and he was taken to court because the, he flogged his child. I think the child told the school or something like that and then he ended up becoming a he was taken to court for beating his child and they went to court and his lawyer told the judge that this guy is new abroad and where he comes from that is the way you discipline children that is how you raise children that they don't know any other way that a parent that does not even flog their child when they do when they do something bad are actually the bad parents that the parents that are spoiling their children so to him that is the only way he has no other method of doing it and which is true because in nigeria for example i know growing up in nigeria if your parent those parents that flog all over your body can be seen as abusive parents but the parents that use a smooth cane a smooth cane to flog you on your hands and we, we do not use the hands because they don't want to scar your body so flogging in nigeria is normal i'm just saying now for anyone that does not know so a parent that you a parent that grabs any cane that is not smooth in my culture is seen as abusive parent because that's not the right cane to use but i'm saying it now it sounds ridiculous because i live abroad and it's different but i'm saying that when i lived there that was normal or parents that punch and no 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 they believe in put nail down put your hand out 
When they say put it out, it's because they want to avoid your face. That would have been seen as a perfect parenting. So the person that comes about and says, oh, it's different though. Seize their phone. Do this one. Do that one. Is the way to discipline children. For example, I'm giving rough examples. So going back to this court, court case, the, the, the lawyer said, my client knows nothing else. This is the gold standard where he's coming from. He is here. He doesn't need to be in prison or whatever for this. No, he needs to be reorientated. He needs to be taught. He needs to be equipped on the right way. When I use that, I'm using that because it's the Western way. So in Nigeria, it will not be seen as the right way, but I'm just saying. You know what I'm trying to say? So, and guess what? Guess what? At the end of the day, the lawyer won the case for his client, and the judge agreed. And this parent, parent was uh, the, the, the court said they had to go for parenting classes and stuff like that. And that was the end of it. I'm using that as an example for anyone that is saying, This my African parent is this. This my. If an African parent starves their child, you know, okay, talking about, you know, wicked parents or whatever, a parent that makes sure their child is fed, makes sure their child goes to school, makes sure their school books are not lacking, makes sure a lot of these things in our culture, parents that do not care at all, will not even care if there's food in the house. We've talked about negligent parents that do not care if you have clothes to wear or not. That do not even care if you're well kept. Do not even care if you have an education. They don't give a damn. And she's living and the mother is crying. A mother that does not care will not even care if you're leaving or coming or going. Even is the mother, is the parent that will say, go, 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 don't can't stay with me. When the mother cried at the end, I felt it because in I'm imagining it in my head that, you know, when you see what she was saying, she's praying for you that this is beyond you. That, that if I'm, I can't remember the word, but it's like there's a spirit behind this. That is African parents. Because when they can no longer understand it, in my language they say, oh, well, I can't. no, be ordinary hand. There is something. My village people, my enemies are trying to turn my child against me. Those are signs that she cannot see what she's doing wrong. And I heard where she said, you know, so, something about, sometimes I don't want to ask you, because when I ask you, it's going to bring out the bitterness. So I saw a mother that was like afraid to even ask a question. Because she's afraid that if I ask, it's a problem. So let me just leave her. Then maybe she will tell me if she wants to. That is the sound of a mother that does no longer, that does no longer know what to do. She, she gave up like, ah, let me not ask her. If I ask her, it will be a problem. And you see where, there was a place where he found, he said, when, when I was in college, she would call, call, call so many times. And if I don't answer, she will call my friends or something like that. That part I thought to myself, well, I think I'm one of those parents. I worry for my children. If my child leaves the house, I like to know where they are all the time. That is a protective parent. A parent. But if, uh, but, uh, if I, he sees it as controlling, for her to be calling your friends because she, know, she wants to know where you are. And that is not a bad parent. And then it's tricky because the same Fanny is saying that, you know, she's controlling because she called so many times. And then she said, she didn't call me for another, there was another place where she said, her mother didn't call her for six months. And, and she said, her mother said, the phone works both ways. So on one hand, she was being criticized for being, calling, for calling a lot. Then maybe she decided, you know what, let me actually wait to be called. And then when she waited to be called, if I said, you didn't call me for six months, I saw a mother that no longer knows how to reach her child. She doesn't have, she's not equipped. She's doing her best to the best of her knowledge. But she, she just can't. You see, when I listen and I see... I, let me, I put out some points. Let me go to the because I'm going to end up saying a lot. Let me just go to this point. If you play this video on a Nigerian TV station or radio station for people to listen, they would look at it and say, what is wrong? There's nothing wrong with your mother. Because a lot of the, why I'm saying this is that it is, the, this is, that is, that, that is the environment your mother grew up in. That is where the mother is operating from. See, they'll be looking at it and say, okay, what did the mother do wrong? They won't see it. 
because it's a different culture. And you know, in Igbo language, you don't learn left hand. You don't learn how to use your left hand in old age. As in, if you're going to be left-handed, it will be from a young age. So meaning that there are some things that when you get old, it's hard to grasp. It's hard to, you know, uh, uh, do. Because you're already used to this other way. Now, another thing I want to speak about, there was a day, uh, 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 I don't know, I can't remember where I found it. I think it was still TikTok or something. And this girl was like, oh, my mother told me she wished I was never born. And everybody was like, how dare she talk to you? And I was thinking to myself, that's awful. How would you say that to a child and everything? But then one day, I came across a video on YouTube. When I was watching it, I went to the comment section. And I was shocked at the number of parents speak about regretting ever having children not because they hate their children but because they realize that they are not equipped to do parenting they realize that parenting is not easy realize how much it takes from you especially if you want to do it right parents there are parents that do not care there are parents that are clingy and trying to get it right and they are, as far as they're concerned everything like, let's do it right let's do it right <clears throat> but there are parents that do not care but a lot of parents that care can sit back and say it is not easy and in the comment section people now mention something and I went and checked it out they mentioned about a group on fa or Facebook called something about I regret having children or I wish I never had children I can't remember the name of Facebook, Facebook group so I, I went there and I saw comments and let me tell you some of the comments you may say oh they are selfish but there are some that will open your eyes as to why some parents actually regret ever having children because there are people that try their best and the children grow up they end up becoming their worst enemies the parents were never good enough no matter what they did and people realize that okay uh, there are parents that feel, feel like i'm never going to be able to do it i don't know how to parent it's hard work it's not for me and thinking about even the girl Going back to the girl that said, my mother told me she wished I was never born. And it, it, from, from the conversation and everything I saw, I sat back and I did. When I saw this, I saw the group and everything. I realized when, when some people wish that their child was never born. It's not necessarily because, because they hate their child or whatever, but because the whole experience may have been traumatic for them. They, for whatever reason, it ended up being completely opposite of what they ever dreamt of. Also, people that realize, let me tell you, there are people that went to study medicine, study law, whatever, and later on they wish they never studied medicine, they wish they had done something else. There are people that traveled, migrated, and they, after 10 years, I said, I wish I never migrated. If people can actually wish they never made such decision, that decision, there are people that can actually wish that having a child was, uh, they, they, they never did it. So it happens. Because if at the end of the day, let's be honest, if your parent has done everything and it turns south, there are parents that have ended up realizing they, you know, they are not good enough to be parents. They just feel like I don't know how to do it. Also, if a parent, for whatever reason, you know, have tried their best to raise their child the way they know, and this child ends up growing up and becoming their worst enemy, don't be surprised if that parent wish they never had a child because they feel like I don't know how to do parenting. I failed. Or I would have been better off not having. It happens because in this whole thing, we have to realize that these are two individuals. Let's actually speak on this as well. I want to say this as well for African parents. We have to know when to let go. If you have said it once or twice and the person said, no, let it be. And, and I would never encourage a parent that has a child that is their relationship is as toxic as what we saw in this um, this one i would never encourage for them to have a, a 25 year old and uh, living with them mm -mm. my opinion be, no i would never encourage it because it's going to be hard it is going to be hard she's a, a grown adult that has all this independence but is actually a bit not independent it's in the sense that she's in your house so sometimes you make that parent want to still Treat them like, okay, I'm the one looking after you. Forgetting that, okay, she's an adult. You understand? She's a grown woman. She should, a grown woman that should be running her own home. So you're trying to run her like you're running your home, but she's a grown woman that's big enough to run her home. If such a child is in a kind of a tricky situation, help them to rent a house, if you can afford it, and pay for a room or whatever, for her to be independent so that peace can reign. 
even in the Bible, was it Abraham? Was it who um, and Lot? I think it was Abraham and Lot that when they are, when they became began to have clashes between their their animals. I think their animals and their families were beginning to clash. Uh, whatever, they went their separate ways for peace to reign. They, I think their animals were kind of mixing up, or their families were not getting along. They went their separate ways for peace, not because they hated each other, but for peace to reign. Don't keep such grown children at home. As long as they've gotten their education, and that is what they have gotten their education, let them go there and establish themselves. If you guys miss one to meet once in a while, let it be a fun gathering. The longer you stay together, the worse that relationship would get. I'm telling you, when they have become so grown, I mean, we're not getting nowhere. You get my point? You know? Another thing she said when she was pregnant, her mother did not contact her, whatever. For most African, let me speak for Nigeria actually, Nigerian parents. <coughs> for most Nigerian parents, you know, we are success driven. We want our children to survive, uh, so, to, to be successful. And if our children fail, we typically take it, typically Nigerians, we take it personally because we feel that we have failed. We feel that we didn't do it right. Yes, that's why you will see Nigerians and say, hey, God, do, you know, um, who did I offend? Do? They take it personally because their drive is for you to do well. When a grown child, when a child has finished school, finished college, let them go and you understand, establish themselves. You guys can have a family dinner once in a in a month at a restaurant. You meet there and go your separate ways. These are for those that are ended up in toxic situations. There are some families that are doing amazingly well. The mother and the daughter are like best friends. You know, that's one thing I think. Uh, that's one thing I think. In what I'm, my opinion, I think um, the the. Um, if Annie is missing, is that she is grown enough now to help fix the relationship between her and her mother. She's a woman now. She's a mother too. She can help. You understand? And you see, when the mother is speaking and the way she speaks back, mba, 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 mba. You can speak your mind, but not this way at 25. The mother is, you understand, there is a way. There is a way. Don't, don't get me wrong, I've lost it sometimes in my life where I just get angry and, you know, speak. But constantly, constantly speaking to a mother that way. Ah, mba. I pray that you find that it's not on the day that um, they dig the ground. In many years to come that they dig the ground to poor her mother, that she will get to know um, the value of her mother. Let me say something else. You know, when she said she was in a relationship, it broke up and she came home to her mother. I thought to myself, if her mother was actually as bad as she has, as she's saying, would she have thought about going home to her mother? For her to have a toxic relationship and go to her mother in America where there are uh, safe homes for single mothers, where there are shelters for single mothers, for her to have gone home to her mother, it says a lot. Because she saw her mother as, you know, for her mother's house to be somewhere she could run to when she needed to. It says a lot. She, at the end of the day, she ended up moving out. She could have not even moved in at all. So at the end of the day, when the going got tough, she ran home to her mother. A mother who is really, really, really bad, I'm telling you, the worst thing happening to you in the world, you won't run to them. No, you will run anywhere else but to them. She is home to you. And there's a reason why she's home to you. So going back to when she said, my mother did not contact me, da 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 da. People, real, people need to realize that sometimes, even as parents are human beings too, she can decide to actually not contact for her own mental health. Because if she realized that no matter what I do, I don't seem to do it right. We end up having worse fights than before. Let me just stay. Mothers are human beings too. You see, in the whole of it, I never saw any aspect that addressed... Let's be honest. I actually thought to myself, how is the mother doing? She said that her mother raised them by herself. But then I think, you know, at a point the parents split up. For her mother to raise them by herself, and her father never showed, according to her, her father never uh, was never there, was always waiting for her to call. 
So his, if, if the father was never there for them, only their mother was. Is anybody actually asking how is the mother coping? Who is looking after the mother? Everybody, no matter how strong you are, we all need looking after too. We all need love too. A mother needs love too. You see, another thing people forget too is that our mothers get to a point where they become like our children. They are not our children, but we, we, we graduate from the point where we say, give me love, give me love, to where we begin to actually give love to them. Begin to pamper them. Begin to, especially those of us that have old mothers, um, old parents, where we begin to show them love. Well, not because our parents were perfect. You know, so her mother, she said her mother cut her hair because she, she cut her hair without telling her mother. And if I'm mistaken, I'm not mistaken, she was in primary school. She said grade 8. She said, I'm not, America. I'm not in America. I don't know what America is. I don't know what grade 8 is. So I don't know if grade 8 is, at, at what age is that? But from what I understand, she was too young to make the decision to cut her hair, to cut her hair herself. If you have a very bad parent, a wicked Nigerian parent, you will not dare cut your hair yourself. Fear no go let you. I'm telling you the truth. Her mother reacted by Kukuma cut everything. <laughs> I'm laughing. It's not funny. But it's their style. I'm not saying it's right. But in their own way of training, they believe that they treat, teach you, they believe that they teach you a lesson you will never try it again in your life. It is the way they know. And I'm not saying it's right. It happened to me. It was Christmas time. In those days, people lose attachment and keep it. Reuse and reuse. I, I was a secondary school, so we used to go to school with the low cut. Yeah, my big sister, the attachment, she said, Oh, I dash you. Ah, I was so excited. My father had gone to work. I was so excited. I carried the attachment. I went and met a friend to help me braid my hair. And she was learning, she was using me to learn. By that, she finished my hair. It was already dark. So let's say I can't remember what time I got home. But I don't think it was midnight. Because by, I don't think it was midnight, maybe around seven. Because my father used to be back from work by around nine. Uh, my father owned shops. So for me, I was home before him. But they said when he came home for lunch, they asked him where I went. They said I went to make hair. And he said because I didn't tell him before going. Or oh, whatever, shall I? I don't know. He got angry and he told my sister that before I, he comes back, he brought out his beer beer shaving stick and said before I come back, shave the whole of her head. I came back, my head was sore. I never forgot that. My scalp was sore because the girl was learning. And then by the time I came back, my sister said, my father, they should, they should cut my hair. I had to sit down. My sister started cutting. There are no talk stories that will make me emotional. Took scissors and cut off all my hair. All. Everything. So, um, as I was saying, cut off my hair. Everything. I was in so much pain because it was a brand new braids and my scalp was sore. So she cut them off after cutting them off. Do you know she cut them off and then she put the scissors in between. You don't need to put scissors under the braid to cut it off from the base. This is the hair I just did and I was in so much pain. Because my father told her to cut my hair, sh shave my head before he gets back and she finished this is too traumatic for me to i don't like remembering it but let me share it since we're on this because there's so much all of us can learn from it and after she finished every single cut was painful after she finished she brought the blade the shaving stick and she called shaved my It is a... This is my childhood trauma. So this is to show you that. This is to show that, like I say, like when I watched this video, I cried because I could feel it from both sides. I, but I'm going to, sh I'm going to share this because I believe it can help somebody today, especially our African parents. Shaved my scalp. And I was in the worst pain of my life. 
I was in pain like on the inside because it was Christmas time and we we're going to go to the village so I made my hair so I was happy I loved the hair and at the same time I was in physical pain because my scalp was pain my scalp was hurting so bad and she shaved everything and on top of that I was still afraid because my father was not home yet I was still afraid that I was going to be beaten when he gets back so just imagine that I would have been I don't know 13 maybe 12 13 I can't remember and so I got the pain was out of the way and everything but I was there waiting for my father to come home and I was waiting for my beating flogging I was I couldn't eat I was just scared that the beating was the next step. My father got back. This is why I'm telling you guys that I understand this thing. Our parents sometimes they did it wrong and not because they were wicked or they hated us or whatever, but because that was what they thought was right. Doesn't make our parents narcissist, no. Let me tell you what my father came back. I was there. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't go to bed that night because I was waiting for my beating. So I wanted to just receive my beating and then move on. And my father got back and he walked in. <laughs> so hard for me. Let me pray. Oh God, this is so hard. I'm really, I'm really praying for. I'm really praying. My father is dead now, so I'm really praying for if I knew and her mother, I'm really praying for them. I'm really praying for them that, you know, I never saw it that my father hated me. I only saw it that he was doing it wrong, but I never saw it that he hated me. Okay. Then he said, my father, I get, it's a bit too sad. When it comes to talking about my father, it's hard for me. So my father came back. Going back to what I'm saying, that it's not wickedness or narcissist. No. It was, they were, that was the way they did things. And they were wrong. But it doesn't make them these evil people. My father came back. And everybody, you know, the way he comes back, everybody comes to welcome him. Like, every day when he comes back from work, everybody have to come and say good evening, you know, to greet our father. And we all came out, and I came out, and he saw me. And, and he saw me, and he was in shock. I could tell from his eyes. I could tell from his eyes that he realized it was. I would, I would tell from his eyes that he was in shock at how bad I looked. That he was shocked at how bad I looked and he he froze and I believe at that moment he was realizing that he went too far but you know he's an African parent he's not going to say sorry so and but and then I was still being afraid that I was still going to be flogged and he, he froze. He was looking at me and was like, oh, um, oh, he's happy. Like, he looked at me and was like, oh, and he, he, he didn't say anything. He just, he just kind of didn't say anything. He kind of walked past. But his eyes told me that he realized how wrong he was. But it was too late. It was already done. But later on, my sister said he told him that, wow, oh, it's really bad. But that was him trying to, you know, do the African thing. What he did, was it wrong? Yes. You shouldn't have gone through your hair without asking, asking me first, okay? That would have been the end of it. And don't do it again. That would have been the best thing. You know what I mean? Don't do that again. Don't ever go out to get your hair done without telling me. And telling me exactly where you're going to be. But shaving my head was wrong. 
you know i'm using my example to still show this thing we call wicked african parent da, 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 da. wicked african parents to show that it doesn't mean they hate us i never felt for one day that my father hated me i just felt like you know he was trying to do it his way and i've shared the story here i i i went to when i was 17 i started going to pentecostal church and we were catholics my father was not a fan of being pentecostal as far as they were concerned pentecostal church is a evil spirit church or all those whatever whatever my father refused and we were having problems with it because i was so determined i'm going to be pentecostal i want to be born again and i was 17 got me arrested for continuing to go to the church he said i shouldn't go i never saw it that my father is wicked he hates me i just saw it like it's difficult, yes, a difficult father that is not understanding me, but I never would have called my father a narcissist for that. No, that was their way. My mother flogged me because she told me my best friend growing up and growing up as a kid, I only play, I always play with boys because even in the in the bed order in my house, I have a senior brother, then me, two younger brothers. So I was maybe that's why I was used to play with boys, and my mother refused. My best friend there was the next door neighbor's, uh, uh, um, the next fence, you know, next door neighbor, the boy there. And my mother one day told me I shouldn't play with him anymore. Who am I going to play with? Who that was my only friend? And he said, don't play with him anymore. I was very little, I was still in primary school. So I went to their house. We normally jump over the fence to go play with them. And then we went there, I went there and my siblings were playing and everything. And I told him, I said, I can't play with you because my mother said I shouldn't play with you. So, and I said, you play there and I play here. It was cover of a uh, drink mineral like um, um, fanta coke all those things so you used to kick it who uh, flick it whoever click flick the farthest is the winner or something i can't remember how it was and i said you play your own here and i play my own here and he said okay and we were playing separately i go back home and my mother was like where were you i said i went to the who did you play with i said no i didn't play with him you know we're at the same place but he was playing on the left side i was playing on the right under my mother beat me up beat me up for playing with like a child think about it a primary school girl that does not know anything she said don't play with boy what would such a young girl know about the difference between boy and girl what can you imagine that kind of parenting but thinking back now what my mother did was wrong but does that make my mother evil no i, I really hope i'm making what i'm trying to show is how there are some things that our african parents have done that are wrong but it doesn't make them evil because their intentions were not evil intentions. I think that's the that's actually the best way to put it. What are their intentions? Are they trying to destroy you? Are they trying to, you know, make you fail? Are they trying? What are their aims at the end of the day? They have these aims and these goals, but unfortunately, they go around it the wrong way. Let's be honest. A lot of our Nigerian parents need parenting classes a lot of them need to be taught differently because there is so much they need to unlearn i'm saying this for even other nigerian parents watching me we need to learn communication we need to learn a grown child is a grown child there is so much we need to learn let's be honest as parents it doesn't always have to be your way because your way is not necessarily the right way we need to Bear in mind that we're raising these children as individuals that will one day grow up and be on their own. So prepare them. I, I gave this explanation once where I say it's like a, a, a boat or a ship that it belongs to your child. But because they are too young to captain it themselves, you are captaining it. As they get to a point, you begin to tell them, well, I'll be watching, you see what I'm doing? Like, After a while, you say, you hold it. And then one day you say, okay, you remove your hand and say, yeah, you continue. It gets to a point where you get out of the garden ship and let them captain it themselves. Because you have brought them slowly to that point. But sometimes African parents, out of love, do not know when to take your hands off and let the child captain the ship. Because you have already brought them to the point where they should be ready to take over. We love them. But let's not smother them with love. Like, you know, suffocate them with it. Because they get to a point where their own wills begin to rise. And they begin to want to branch out 
It may not be your style, but it is our life now. Let them carry go. Um, I took a bit of a break there. Um, so let me say this, right? There is no school. P people are going to go and learn how to be parents. We are all winging it. Um, if I knew, is a mother too. She will get there at some point. But looking at the dynamics and the talk, the talking going on, at the end of the day, let's be honest. You are both adults. You are a grown woman now at 25. But so someone is the parent of that house. The mother is a parent, you know, of that house, and she has, she should have some authority in her house. And um, she's not the she's not the child. She's not the the she's not the child. She's not the offspring. She is a parent, and there are some levels of respect that a woman should have in a in her own home. Okay, that is on one hand, and secondly, African parenting is firm and is not always the correct way, right? But the point I'm making is that because it is firm, and it's not like, you see, they're living in America where Oibo will be like, you know, Oibo children, that she will be going to school with her other, their own style is different, you know, everything is, African parents will shout, African parents, it's their own way, but there are a lot of ways, like I said, that we have to unlearn our African parenting styles, in some ways, there are some ways that Oibo is not doing better than also, in some ways. But there are some ways that we can say, no, this one, we shouldn't be doing it in this 2023. We should know better and do differently. And, but I want the focus to be, you know, when it comes to this narcissist, let the, the, the focus be the fact that what is the aim of that parent? If a parent took knife on their child, we know that there is no, there's no good aim. There's no positive thing that is supposed to come out of that. But if a parent said, you must go to school, for example, no matter how toxically they said it, what is the aim of that? It's for you to have an education. I'm using, she didn't say that in her case, but I'm just using that, that as an example. Or if a parent you know, finds out that the child is pregnant and shows their disappointment, you understand? That is an African parent showing a disappointment. You see, we come from a culture where we raise children, we, we how do I say? That African parents tend to take, let me say Nigeria, let me stick with Nigeria. Nigeria parents to take, tend to take their children's failure personally because they see it like they have failed. If they couldn't, if they didn't go to college, if they didn't do this or, you know, child out of wedlock, you things like that. So <clears throat> at the end of the day, the aim is about my child wants, I want my child to excel, I want my child, more no. Igbo language, a child you can brag about and say, yes, I raised that child. It's an African parent thing. Like I'm saying again, what is the intention? The intention is not to harm their children. The intention is to make them do well by fire, by force. It's just their way. Okay? So because people will be saying, oh, please, oh, Johnny, it doesn't make it that, it doesn't make it the other people that are not doing it is soft talk that they are evil. No. What is their aim? What is their agenda for their child? Um, another area I really want to address is the area of social media. Because um, uh, if Ani is posting this thing and all of a sudden her, her page, her platform blew up because the world loves drama. And content creators are always tempted to give the world more of that thing that is giving them more view, that is giving them more... Do you know what I'm trying to say? Likes and stuff like that. It's it's a very natural thing that oh this is working. Wow, I've been on YouTube for this long. I've been on this for too long. I never got this amount of views. And say this is what they want to watch. I'll give them more of it. But, but it's important to also be careful not to get carried away with it and to the point where you know it becomes oh this is my content. Like this is what people like to watch and give them more because they are looking for more. Because at the end of the day. People will look for it because it's drama, but they don't care about your family in the real sense of it. Because at the end of the day, when the cameras go off and the internet got switched off, you are left with your life and the life of your family that you have. Everybody go home to their own families. What is the story with your own family then? And when it climaxes, when it gets to the climax, where, okay, 
you have moved out and everything, no more drama. Those people that came for drama, they would leave. They won't watch anymore because it's no longer exciting. Because the drama that drew their attention, you know, because that drama is gone. People need to be careful what they use to build their platforms. Unfortunately, many people that watch your family fall apart and they are busy trying to patch their own families, uh, but they would easily watch someone else's family falling apart for their entertainment. Going back to the Nigerian or uh, Angel African parents, Nigerian parents, you would see like when the she was asking her daughter, Where are you going? She got the mother was broken because it's like the child is going and the her grandchild was going, and she got upset. But I want to say this to any parent watching this. You have to learn when things are no longer under your control and accept. Accept that it's out of your control. At that point when she said she wanted to leave, the maximum the mother should have done is, okay, where are you going? Where are you going to be staying? You know, um, just in case or whatever. You know, and let her go. Forcing her to stay, there's no point. And I think at this point, uh, I think at this point, if I his mother, if she comes across this, or people that are in situations like that, let go. Let go. Like, when we've done our best and we don't know what else to do, let her go. She may be, you never know, in the next two years, three years, four years, relationships may improve. Let her go be her own adult, her own mother, I mean, her own um, homeowner, run her own life for a while. Let her be. Because the more they stay together, the more they are going to argue, the more it's, it's going to get worse. There are times, I shared the story already about Abraham, and I shared the story already about Abraham a lot. It got to the point where they had to, for peace, for peace to reign. At this point, she needs to go be by herself. She needs to go figure out life for herself. She needs to go run her life on her own without your interference anymore. She is a... 25 year old she is a grown woman if she needs your advice the phone is there she can ring you and ask for your advice if she doesn't need it let it be and i want parents to learn don't ever let your children be all you have in life don't let them be your all in all have a life without children in the sense that they will regardless whether you are getting on well or not children will grow up and they will move out and live their own lives. What is left of your life after they leave? Start planting those seeds of a life without children for the future. If they end up turning right, hallelujah, they come to visit you every weekend, every once in a month or whatever. If they don't, you should have a plan ahead. Let me say it. Nobody came as an escort to anybody in this life. Your children were not born the day you were born. The same way you came on your own in this life. The same way you will leave this world on your own. We sometimes we have children and we forget that. So Nigerian people believe that their children is like a property. They are not. You know, their children are not even your children are not even a branch of a tree. You know the way the branch is still stuck to the tree. No, there is this plant. I don't know what it's called, but no, there's, there's a kind of plant that when it grows, it touches the ground, and once it touches the ground, it grows root and disconnects. That is what children are like. And that is what it should be. They should get to a point where they disconnect and start their own lives. You understand? You need to let go. Even for your own mental health. This woman in this story is a 57-year-old woman. And at 57, to have to be going through this struggle is too much. Too much trauma for the woman herself. We as Nigerian parents... You see that final dragging, don't go, and then the police getting called. At that point, the mother was wrong because she was, she has the right, she had the right to leave. That is when, this is a part of the things parents will need to unlearn. The fact that you're holding on and thinking your children are your property, to, no. There are points where you have to hands up and say, Jesus, take the will and leave it because you've done the best to the best, to, you know, to the best of your ability. You let go. Sometimes the mother children will figure it out one day and they will come back in a better way. But the longer you drag it, the worse it would get. Because from what we see, that sees her mother like she's a worse enemy. From what we saw, and uh, from what some of us are seeing, uh, from what I am seeing, is a Nigerian parent that is doing her best. Her best may not be good enough. 
Her best may not be the right way, but unfortunately that is what she knows and she needs to unlearn some stuff. But in my opinion, from what I saw, that is not an evil parent. That is not a parent that is a, wishes a child evil. No, you know. So there is a lot that I end up, end up saying. I think this is going to end up being, I don't know how many minutes I've done, a very, very long video. But I think it was necessary to, you know, to discuss this. And uh, I'm going to leave you guys. Please leave your opinions, your own experiences in the comment section. Let's help each other. You don't know who needs this right now. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye.